Hi, my name is Paul Malalu. This is my project number two presentation. I'd like to welcome the stakeholders, the parents, teachers, the county social studies coach, and the assistant principal that are in attendance today. And the focus of this assessment, as in where it took place, was Forsyth Central High School, which is in Cumming, Georgia. So the idea behind the test, as like why are we assessing, was to make sure that students were able to not only uh, memorize material, but to actually comprehend and apply material from the Great Depression, New Deal programs, and World War II in a United States history class, which is a end of course uh, test assessment course for the state of Georgia. The end of course assessment focuses not only on the knowledge based questions, but the depth of knowledge for students to be able to apply that knowledge. And uh, that is the goal for the unit. So this unit was a four week unit to start with standard 17, which was the Great Depression, go through standard 18 New Deal programs onto uh, World War II. And the whole idea is to connect the dots into uh, how the Great Depression uh, led to what some would describe as the need for the New Deal programs, and then how to truly get out of the Great Depression. Uh, there's a connection to World War II, uh, and then obviously all the implications involved with uh, a global war uh, second global war. This is an 11th grade level course. The assessment was completed by 80 total students, so 42 male, 38 female, and then the demographic breakdown uh, was is listed here with the amount of uh, white male, white female, black male, black female, Hispanic male, Hispanic female, and Asian male and Asian female students that were assessed. The course design at Forsyth Central High School was a seven period course uh, for the, the year. So it's a year long or two semester course. This assessment took place in February of 2021, which would be the second semester of this course. So students do have uh, a quality base of United States history prior to taking this assessment. Um, all the way up to the early 1900s is what they would have learned up to that point. The uh, focus is to uh, address the needs of diverse student populations. That's what we're looking for when we're uh, looking through all the data that we'll see in just a moment. The ability to analyze the causes con and uh, consequences of the Great Depression, evaluate these New Deal programs, and identify the origins and major developments and the domestic impact of World War II, that's the, the overall goal. And then there's specific components that students need to know uh, as they're working their way through these three standards. Standards 17, 18, 19 were assessed. Uh, this was a longer test with 45 total multiple choice questions, two performance tasks and three two-part items. The DOK, which that stands for depth of knowledge questions. So level one, level one would be your uh, basic recall type of questions. Uh, level two would then require students to not only recall the information, but then uh, apply it in some manner. And then the depth of knowledge three level would be the most difficult of the questions. Uh, and that could involve a variety of, of uh, tasks because there are performance tasks that students would uh, have to complete as part of this assessment. Uh, it could also involve analyzing a passage or uh, looking at some sort of uh, historical image and being able to uh, infer when it took place or why it was taken or what is the significance. So there's uh, more to it. And then below at the bottom of this is the breakdown of questions that came from each of the standards. An item analysis was uh, taken after this assessment, and this is the percentages of scores for each individual question from the assessment. We will see in just a moment uh, kind of the breakdown of what was good and what you know was, was something that needed to be worked on or improved. And the first thing that jumps out at you would be the 
question number one that 100% of the students got right. And so it's like, well, that's awesome. And, you know, what did the question uh, tell us? And was it, you know, a depth of knowledge one, two, or three? And you could potentially assume it was one, but it may or may not have been when you analyze the data. And then uh, question number 29, wow, you know, students struggled with that. Was that a depth of knowledge three? What was the content covered? Is that something that was just a gap? Uh, in the teaching. And so with this data, it's extremely beneficial to be able to kind of move forward with uh, students' uh, progress. And we'll, we'll look at that in just a moment. So the breakdown of our scores by student numbers, uh, you see that 57 students did exceptionally well on this test, uh, making an A, which is, you know, a difficult task to do, being that the uh, material is challenging. 13 students made a B, so you know we're talking out of the 80 students, we have 70 that made an A or B, so that's that is awesome. Um, but then there are still some students that made Cs, and we had four students that failed the assessment. So uh, you all you really want to make sure to address uh, the needs of students that didn't fully grasp all of the material, like some of the other students may have. As we're looking at some of the demographic specific data, uh, the overall class score was 92%, which that uh, is, is really a fantastic number. And uh, sometimes the, the tests don't reflect that as far as an overall class average, uh, but this one, you know, thankfully for the, the students' sake that they did really well. Uh, white students, their average score was 92.04%. Black students' average score was 86.75%. Hispanic students average score was 93.72% and Asian students average score was 95.66%. So when you look at the, the data that was just lifted, listed off with the item analysis, with the student demographic percentages, uh, all students were successful in, in the majority of the content. Uh, when you look at the demographics, black students did score lower at 86.75%, uh, which is still a, a good average, but when you look at that, you want to gear all students to being able to uh, grasp the material with what we would describe as mastery, uh, which you, the goal is to have all students, you know, 90% or above uh, in this United States history course, and the breakdown from the state of Georgia is for students to exceed and be 92% or above. And so that's where we uh, would like to set our, our bars that all students get at least to that 92 percentage. The DOK level three questions, that is something that would need to be addressed because out of the, um, the level one, two, and three, that would be the lowest percentage as far as the overall scores. Performance tasks and two-step questions are another area that would need to be addressed. And the number of failing students or students with a 70 to 79%, that would also uh, need to be looked at because you want to try to get those students to um, see some more growth. Because uh, again, overall assessment was quality, but you never want to uh, get satisfied with where students are. You always want to see, okay, how can we improve? What can we do better? Uh, trends and implications, uh, this is just the imagery of what was said in that the DOK level, level three questions was an 88 percentage as far as uh, the multiple choice assessments. And then the two part items, the breakdown by standard, 81 percent with the Pacific World War II information. So uh, you have the, the home front, you have the European theater, and then you have the Pacific theater. And that was the one that was the most difficult to grasp for students. So that's an area that we can focus on. The areas to celebrate, uh, you see that the all demographics did well in, in this test. The depth of knowledge level one and two was at 92%. Uh, the test itself consisted of a variety of types of levels of questions uh, to accurately assess students' knowledge and application of the material by including the performance tasks for students. The uh, really the just exceptionally well uh, percentage scores for World War II with the European home front scoring an average of 93% uh, or the European front and the home front at 93% and 95% means a really good grasp of those two, uh, those two theaters of the war. The areas of weakness, the performance tasks uh, were at 81%. The two part items were an average of 82%. The DOK level, DOK level three questions were at 88%. And then the two analyzing photographs question were at 83% and 68%. So that's something that would definitely uh, be addressed and, and need to be practiced. 
So as far as the, the next steps of, well, okay, where, where do we go from here? Uh, one big suggestion would be to reward the students that did so well. I know a lot of times when you analyze data, you focus on the students that did not do well, uh, figure out ways to remediate, and that's very important. But I think sometimes we overlook the students that were successful because we think, okay, they've got it, you know, they can progress and move on where they need to be. Um, and, and, you know, that is a, a positive, but what, one thing that we do uh, that I think we can incorporate even more is uh, the PBIS for rewards program, not just for remediation. Uh, and, and that's something at Forsyth Central High School, we uh, can continue to do using our Bulldog Vest uh, tickets that we have where students can win prizes uh, based off of what they do. School shout outs, we do this really well for AP exams, but maybe not so much for EOC exams. You know, that tends to get overlooked in comparison to AP exams. Uh, so I think that could be something that we, we need to address. Finding ways to continue to incorporate remediation strategies. I know uh, the extended lunch time where we have uh, tutoring available is a great way to help students that need that remediation. Uh, but also supplemental interactive resources are really a positive thing for students that uh, maybe they didn't get it in the style that was delivered. And so some of the more interactive resources that we have, um, whether it be through like Brain Pop or Ed Puzzle videos or something that uh, involves a little bit more interaction. Um, Nearpods, if you don't just make them a PowerPoint, but you make them interactive are also a great suggestion. Um, even having students after they learn the material make flip grids to you know, show that they truly know the material. All these are things that we can use to address gaps. And I think some professional development for teachers to incorporate those things uh, would be needed. And to develop and implement learning strategies to help all students grow in those depth of understanding. So those DOK level three questions, uh, and you can do this by spiral notes. Uh, so something maybe more basic that progresses leveling so start with a foundation that they do understand and then build up to those multi-step questions or even breaking the questions apart uh, to where you have one part of the question and when they get that then they can move to the next part of the question rather than it all be in one multi-step question it is multiple step questions but broken apart and then heterogeneous classroom grouping uh, really can help when you are um, working on some of the the diving in components of the standard. And so those would be my next step suggestions for the school to continue to improve and to build on the foundation that is already there. I really appreciate you guys listening and taking the time uh, to you know, provide your feedback. And I'm looking forward to the continued growth of all of our students.